All right, this is gonna be like video number three, I think, that we've made today. But I wanted to divide this up uh, because a lot, of, a lot of deep dive details here with Teal. Teal, we've been following you on social for some time. You're doing a lot of great things with the Yamaha and the gearbox you produced. And then you finally went out and bought yourself your own airplane, tore the engine out of it, and put one of your own configurations into this and actually flew it to Oshkosh. I'm, I'm standing in Oshkosh and this airplane is actually here. You flew it all the way from where? Uh, Buckeye, Arizona, just west of Phoenix. Okay, so he's got some real cross-country hours on this thing. Still playing with it, but tell us what you've done on this installation so far. Do you want me to make it less detailed so you have less videos to deal with? Just <laughs> No, we like, we like the details. We do not like the details. <laughs> all right, I'll, like I'll get three videos. I'll get detailed with it. So, um, to start with, I took an O235 out of the RV9, and it uh, it had a lightweight wooden prop on it. But the you know it's an O235, and the climb was I don't know seven eight hundred feet a minute max uh, before, and so um, put the this is the Yamaha Sidewinder engine. I ended up using the stock turbo, the stock header, the stock exhaust discharge location, and I think Ryan's going to get some good detailed footage around the engine and everything. But um, I also modified the original van's mount. It was pretty easy to cut the dynofocal ring off of it and add to, to where I, the hard points I needed to on the engine. The other big thing about it was there's no cowl modifications other than I added a cowl flap door to the bottom for ground taxiing more than anything because just to try to get it, the heat out of it whenever I'm taxiing. In flight, it's fine. And then I cut on my top cowl, I cut um, a space to put a louver in the top to get the heat out after I shut it down for, because there's these, these engines have so much heat built up in the turbo and they're a liquid cooled housing. So that's part of what this spine fed tubing is about. And this does is borrowed from the refrigeration industry, but I wanted to start dropping the temperature of that coolant from the turbo before I reintroduced it to the coolant system. And so as you, when you shut it down, there's coolant still in that line and the turbo is boiling it off. So that was my cowl modification is to open this up up here. And, and um, so those are the cowl modifications. And then the, like I said, the engine mount was pretty easy. The, um, I have a, a radiator for the cooling on the left side. And the other side is, a, is also sort of a radiator, but it's used for the air, for the combustion air. And it's called an intercooler. And uh, that's just working out awesome as far as uh, engine coolant and uh, my cut combustion air is really really cool. Are, Even, are you using this as per Yamaha um, uh, produced it or are you able to dial up or down the uh, the boost on this? So right now we are using an aftermarket ECU and we are we are probably just just if you want to talk kPa like five or ten kPa over or if you want to talk inches of mercury, like half an inch of mercury at max boost. We're running about 210 horsepower. Yamaha stock is about 204 at sea level. Um, so we're just ever so slightly above that, just the way our tune and all the numbers work out, just it's just slightly above what Yamaha runs it at. So for um, now on this test platform, you kind of want to run it as per supplied to see where you're at in the aviation. Yeah, yeah, so I've got a lot of influence, including the, the guy that's helping me tune that has a lot more experience with these engines. You know, we can go 250, 260 horsepower and not change a thing on the engine, including the injectors. That is but, insane, just by the stroke of a, of a key to change horsepower Yeah, and I can like do that. it from the cockpit on a dial, but I'm trying to keep it as much stock to kind of get some time on it and plus, you know the, in, the 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 guy that wants to do something similar that doesn't want to hop it up that wants a stock engine and how long the how, how long the longevity <laughs> is but you know it's in stock configuration right now even at the 180 horsepower 190 horsepower because it's all displayed in the cockpit that's what's new nice about can bus architecture now and you you can calculate all your fuels and display it in a nice color display but at my 70 170 horsepower 180 horsepower i'm currently climbing at 2500 feet a minute if i go to my two 210 horsepower it's like three about 3,000 feet a minute and that's indicating 125 130 miles per hour so it's not at its slowest climb and everything so it's just that's amazing cruise climb for most of us right, right. I mean. yeah and, and that is with the constant speed prop the prop that I'm testing with right now with Duke and fixed pitch it's, it's about 1500 feet a minute but 
Uh, Duke is currently working on an in-flight adjustable option for this application where I'm going to have some good test numbers. Nice. Um, but, you know, 1,500 feet a minute is pretty, is pretty darn good from where I came from, but when you have about 20 or 30 hours flying with this and you swap it over and you're going 1,500 feet a minute, you're like, what happened to my climb? Yeah. But, I mean, well, I guess have, it's... You have doubled your horsepower with this, right? You start out with uh, Lycoming 0235. 115 horsepower. Ish. and Yeah, yeah. And it's more than double when you consider how much loss that you have in altitude. Okay. Like, you know, I like to fly, I like to climb at, or stay above 5,000 feet all the time. Uh, Lycoming at 5,000 feet is, you know, 3% per 1,000 feet. So you're, I don't know, 70 or 65 horsepower, 80 horsepower maybe in that range. Right. And it just keeps getting less and less. So at 10,000 feet, I mean, you're really limited. At 15,000 feet, I can still make about 165 horsepower. And at 15,000 feet, I can still climb at over 2,000 feet a minute. There's no, there's no limit to the climb. But at that altitude, you're also losing prop efficiency and, and wing efficiency and all kinds of stuff is yes. going down, not just the engine. Right, yeah. yeah, and the RV9 has been a really good platform for high altitude testing, I'm finding out, because this wing does do really good at high altitude. It was designed more of a cruiser than an aerobatic or mix aerobatic. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's a great, it's been a great test bed for this engine and t testing at high altitude cruise and efficiency numbers. And as far as efficiency numbers, I want to clarify that too, that you know a lot of people that's been stopping into the booth the last couple days is they see a small engine and they say, Oh, I want, you know, I'm going to get really good economy cruise, but, you know, you make X amount of horsepower, you know, the laws of physics says that you're going to have to throw so much, especially a reciprocating piston engine. So we're not saving any fuel per se, other than you have the ability to get to a really high altitude. I'm at the airport a lot more these days editing and walking out of the FBO, out onto the ramp, it's bright. So I've been wearing my flying eyes eyewear a lot more these days. They're lightweight, extremely comfortable, flexible, and have micro thin temples that slip onto your headsets. You like saving money? Get 10% off right now by using the code experimental. Check out the links below. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at aviatorsclinic.com. Diamond Doors at diamonddoors.com. Flying Eyes at flyingeyesoptics.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at flyfoxtrot95.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. and make up for that thin air. You have some savings there, but compared to the O320 and an RV9, we're not doing anything better in a fit in a in cruise than you would. This just drops a lot of weight off and then you can climb out at 3,000 feet a minute or something like that. Because in comparison to the O235, I lost about 35 pounds going to this engine. Uh, and that is at using the stock cast iron header and a constant speed prop on it. Right now I got a fixed pitch prop, so I'm about 50 pounds lighter than the O235. And probably if I had an O320 in here, it'd probably be closer to 80 or 90 pounds lighter than the O320. What length prop are you running on this, the pitch? Prop? So currently right now I'm using a 70 inch uh, two blade, but we're probably gonna go to a, end up going to a three blade and a 69 maybe. Uh, the uh, My prior prop was Airmaster that was really performing performing well. Um, we have we had to change a pitch change motor and Airmaster's getting getting me a new motor for that. We're gonna probably gonna go back and do some testing with that while Duke works on the uh, in-flight adjustable. Um, but it was a 67 inch three blade uh, Sensen inch blades. How, how much ground clearance do you have or are you only doing three point departures and landings with the 70 inch? Uh, the, you know what it's really not that much I mean different I mean well what an inch and a half and the difference between the, the 67 or something like that. I don't know what they typically run on that it just seems like something yeah. you might be running on a, on a smaller stole aircraft with 70 inches. If, if you do a wheel landing you still got good Yeah 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 I think common on these planes is the 68 to 67 to 69 inches is okay. really common on the RV9. So I'm a half an inch over what the standard sure. would be on sure. the, this plane. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for taking a quick tour 
uh, around your aircraft and what you've got going on this platform. If you want to follow Teal online, where can people follow you? Because you, you do not daily posts, not weekly, but like yeah, every couple and, weeks, every and month I, or so. Yeah, I kind of follow behind the scenes too and don't post everything that we're doing all the time because sometimes we're changing directions so fast. Which, that it's, which is one way it kind of frustrating, but also kind of cool because like, what's going on with Teal? All of a sudden, boom, he bought an airplane and ripped the engine out of it. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing, boom, he's here at Oshkosh. Yeah, you know? so I've, I follow a lot on the Facebook Yamaha Aircraft Conversions group until there's another, I would like a standard forum developed around the Yamaha Aircraft Conversions. So if there's any, uh, uh, developers out there, net developers and stuff, I'm willing to pitch in for somebody to start a forum for the Yamaha guys. Um, aside uh, from the Facebook Yeah, platform. aside from the Facebook, because a lot of people don't follow Facebook and social media. They get but thrown in Facebook jail. Yeah, yeah, they get thrown in Facebook jail, and there's rules in there that they're kind of upset. So if we had a standard forum, but I, uh, that's the best place currently to go to is the Yamaha Aircraft Conversions on, on Facebook. Um, I'm on there at least monitoring and listening for any kind of information that I can share or just get somebody in the right direction. Um, but the other thing is we have a website, SkytraxUSA.com. Uh, we haven't tried to update it every once in a while with some pictures and stuff like that, but it's a place to go to to hit the contact button and email me and get a hold of me directly and talk to me on the phone if you want to about some of this stuff. Sounds good. All right, well, follow him over there and of course, uh, Follow us here on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com.